Hello everyone! The Earth Overhaul team and I are very excited to present to you the 1.1 update for our Planet Pack. For the past month, we've been diligently working on a new batch of content to release to the community. This update has three main features, which I'll cover more in detail individually later on. A custom Earth texture, custom terrain, and a visual moon background, as well as some other bug fixes and improvements, which are all covered in the patch notes. To demonstrate some of the features, I'll first start with Launch to the Moon. This will be able to show you the visual moon as well as some improvements made to the cycle texture. We'll first start off with those texture improvements. In our first release, you can see that the clouds are actually really stretched, and the sunset takes very long to complete. The clouds here also look like very thin lines. And looking at the 1.1 version, we see a drastic difference. The clouds are much less stretched, and the sunset doesn't take up as much of the cycle as before. There's also of course the planet texture, which I'll talk about in a bit. Now, looking back at our launch, you can see the difference in the textures. If you've been using the overhaul pack, you should be able to tell the difference. Since those clouds aren't so stretched anymore, they should look more natural. Now that we're in space, you may have noticed the visual moon we've added. We matched up the orbital periods of the real moon and the visual moon, so in its orbit, the real moon will always point to the same position as the visual moon in the sky. We've also made it so that you can't see both moons at once, even when zoomed out. Another good thing to mention, which is also a good segue into the terrain segment, is that re-entering back on Earth and landing, you actually have to plan where you're going to land. Some terrain features can be challenging to land on if you're landing things like boosters, or capsules using parachutes, especially if you're at higher altitudes where things can break because the parachutes can't slow them down as much. This makes gameplay a little more interesting, and adds a new layer of things to plan for. With all that being said, we can now look at terrain. All the terrain shown was crafted with custom height maps and terrain formulas. What this means for you is that you'll never encounter two of the same features. No two mountains are the same, and you'll have no problem with variation as there's more than 17 mountain ranges for you to explore, as well as many other biomes including plains, hills, mountains, deserts, dunes, canyons, and more. And with some types of gameplay, you're almost guaranteed to never see the same place. And that's just looking at it on the grand scale of things. Using some rovers, we can get those close-up shots of the terrain, which really illustrates how challenging some of these features can be, as well as showing that you don't want to land in some places. But there still is an almost overwhelming amount of terrain for you to explore, so it's safe to say that you won't get bored of this. However, the scale of things might not be truly quantifiable just by looking at the close-up shots with the rover. So, we can take to the skies to truly show you how large some of these features can be. Flying directly next to one of the mountain ranges really sells the scale of it, especially when zooming out. It leaves you with the possibility of interacting with the terrain yourself, like making mountain bases, or doing flying challenges based on different areas. I'd like to look at our planet texture, as well as take a bit of time to thank Mario, as well as all of the other members and testers on the Earth overall team. Everyone really came through on this one and put a lot of effort forth into getting this update out. I'd like to thank Mario especially for pretty much carrying us in getting terrain and the planet texture done. Without him, and of course all of the other members, we wouldn't have been able to get this out to you guys. So, I'm just giving a big thanks to the Earth overall team for making the impossible a reality. But of course, nothing is perfect, so let's talk about the bugs and things to note. Our only real bug is this swamp area at about 90 degrees clockwise from the launch pad. It's in fact so odd that you may even lose gravity when interacting with it. If you interact with this area, you may lose your ability to collide with terrain. This can be fixed by reloading your game. There's also a thin white line protruding from this area into the atmosphere. It's a very odd place, and you're really only bound to see it if you go out looking for it. So realistically, this shouldn't affect your gameplay too much. Moving on onto the map view, you might remember on the release version that the Earth map text could be a bit glitchy. This has since been fixed. In portrait mode, it's unlikely that you'll see a difference between the stock game and Earth overhaul. However, in landscape mode, you might detect a period on the left of your screen. This is due to trying to hide the name of some of our technical planets and shouldn't be too much of an inconvenience. Apart from those, we have no more bugs to talk about since we fixed them all. The download for Overhaul is in the description of this video. It contains all the things you'll need to download and some information provided in the README text. And also as a little last minute addition, iOS is getting an update which contains file editing in it, so soon, everyone should be able to use Planet Packs or Blueprint Edit. With all that being said, all of us here at the Earth Overhaul team hope you enjoy this Planet Pack. 